what is a wounded prophet? It's a disparaging term, often tarted up to sound pastorally loving or pastorally caring. A wounded prophet, when that phrase is used, is picturing somebody on the front line who has become wounded, whether through a dislocated shoulder, a fractured leg, some kind of flesh wound, which renders them incapable of functioning as they should. Think of a soldier on the front line who takes fire and becomes wounded and is unable, literally unable to walk or the soldier is removed into some kind of first aid facility where they are classified as wounded. It's important to understand that there are two main types of wounding. The intimidation that comes from Satan, from the enemy, and divine pathos. And true prophetic ministry requires the latter of the two. It requires a form of divine wounding. The wounded prophet is a lazy trope used by religious pros who fundamentally don't want to listen to the prophetic word of the Lord. Let me tell you this. There was a time when Elijah, as one of the most famous, well-known biblical prophets, functioned in his role as a prophet in a way that was wounded. Do you remember Carmel? Do you remember, recall the moment, the sign, the wonder, the drama of Carmel where Elijah thundered to the people of God, choose this day who you will serve. And then everything that we know that followed by way of sign and wonder, the fire, the water soaked altar and the fire that fell from heaven and the self-harming of the false prophets and the lack of power in the face of false religion and false demonic gods. The point is this, in the moment that Elijah functioned at Carmel, he was not wounded. He was functioning in his prophetic role. But what happened immediately after Carmel, where through Jezebel, Ahab and Jezebel, he ran for his life because of the threats, because of the intimidation of the voice of the enemy. And this prophet of God who had previously called down fire from heaven and manifestly proven the legit legitimacy of what he was saying and the truth of who Yahweh was, ran for his life, thrown into anxiety and potentially a depth of suicidal depression. In that moment, under the broom tree, Elijah was wounded. Why? Because he wasn't in that moment capable of fulfilling his function as a prophet, his prophetic function. He was wounded. And the Lord met him graciously, gave him a kick, told him to get up and get on with it. But at Carmel, he wasn't wounded. This is why the phrase is a lazy trope used by religious pros who want to reject the prophetic and today in the church and who want to really just be part of the lineage of those who've always wanted to murder and kill the prophets is because you can't differentiate between a non-wounded prophetic function and a wounded prophetic moment. The language of being a, pro a wounded prophet is, is really hard-heartedness and stiff-neckedness. It, and it functions to intimidate people to not listen to what the genuine prophetic word and challenge of the moment is. It's important to say this, that the, the fundamental difference between a wounded prophet and a non-wounded prophet is the ability to function as God has called, as God has created. The prophetic function will be labelled as being wounded by default. And herein is the difference, and this is what I'm explaining to you now, the difference between Elijah's non-wounded functioning at Carmel and his wounded moment under the broom tree was this. It's a phrase that I've written about in this book, Body Zero. 
divine pathos. And some of you listening to me may begin to roll your eyes at the mentioning of that phrase. But let me tell you, it is the difference between a, a true biblical understanding of what it means to be prophetic in the New Testament and this lazy trope leveled by re lazy religious pros who want to reduce any prophetic disruption as being an unhealthy wounded soldier on the front, front line who's now not he's not fit for purpose he's not capable of functioning why would you listen to him these are the words on page 68 of body zero if you've not read it i encourage you to this is this is these are the words of Abraham Heschel, the Polish Jew. I'm not sure if he was saved. I'm not sure if he was messianic. But what he writes about the biblical prophets answers this question, what is a wounded prophet? And the answer is, there is an infinite difference between a wounded prophet and the divine pathos, which makes up the, the, basic, the basic plumb line of what it means to be a prophet or prophetic. Listen to Heschel. The sorts of crimes and even the amount of delinquency that fills the prophets of Israel with dismay do not go beyond that which we regard as normal, as typical ingredients of social dynamics. To us, a single act of injustice, whether cheating, business, exploitation of the poor, is slight. To the prophets, a disaster. To us, injustice is injurious to the welfare of the people. To the prophets, it is a death blow to existence. To us, an episode. To them, a catastrophe, a threat to the world. That's the difference between a, a true prophetic calling and ministry and word podcast, book, and the lazy trope of being a lazy prophet. The difference is divine pathos, and it's what I've just said. It's that we are all wounded by the church. That's the re that When that trope is used and leveled, it, this is what I would say. We are all wounded by the church, such as our current condition. If a body has a broken ankle, the whole body is wounded, not just the ankle. And to think that you're not wounded, to, to carry yourself, to promote yourself, to act as though you're not wounded, I used to be, is a failure to assess the health of the body as a whole. We are all, let me tell you, we are all wounded. We are all currently suffering. We are all currently in some form of immobility, such is the unfaithfulness and chaos of the church. That is not the same as the divine pathos that calls attention to that and even prescribes a solution for it. Being a wounded prophet is a lazy trope used by religious pros who want to reject and even kill the prophetic impulse. Divine pathos is something of the sharing of the suffering of God himself for the current condition of the church. Where you hear the prophetic word of the Lord, genuinely, there will be an intimidating attempt to get you to just put it aside as some kind of wounded, dysfunctional message. It's a lie of the enemy. It was a lie of the enemy for Elijah, for Jeremiah, for all of the biblical prophets of old, and today for New Testament people who had commanded to eagerly desire something comparable by way of spiritual gifting to that, there will also be that leveled accusation. Let me encourage you, when you eagerly desire the gift of prophecy, and when the Lord gives you that by the Holy Spirit, you will understand. And until you come to a place of walking truly, walking in the place of divine pathos, as I've explained in this book, you will always be tempted to go along with the lazy trope that is a wounded prophet. You need to heal up. You need to, you need to be unwounded in order. The truth is there is a wounding. There is a cut. There is a 
There is a wounding from the Lord. It's called divine pathos, and it is the most unspeakably precious gift, even if it's one of the hardest things to deal with this side of eternity.